Hello. It's good to have you back. We're continuing our studies in regards to the church in Ephesus and the letter that Paul wrote to that church that we have as Ephesians. We're in chapter 2 and today we will be looking at verses 19 to 22. But a reminder about yesterday. Do you remember yesterday we had this wonderful picture that God has given us of the church, the body of Christ. And it didn't matter whether you were a Jew or a Gentile, once we received Christ as our Savior, we were brought into his body, one body. He's the head and we're the body. And it didn't matter what our background was the body of Christ. And we can understand the picture of a body. We're going to read now in these few verses about three more pictures that God gives us of who we are because of what Jesus did for us and because we received him as our Saviour and our Lord. Have you done that? Because if you haven't, if you have not yet been willing to receive him, and to repent of your sins and ask him to be the Lord of your life, then none of this actually applies to you. You're outside of this. But if you have done that, if you have humbly repented before the Lord of your sin, turned to him, thanked him for dying for your sin, and asked him to be your saviour and Lord of your life, then all of this applies to you. This is from God to you. Let's read from verses 19 to 22. It says, Consequently, or so, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Three more pictures. The first one in verse 19, it tells us that you are fellow citizens with God's people. We are citizens of the kingdom of God kingdom of heaven. In Philippians chapter 3, we read that in verse 20. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are citizens of the kingdom of God, where Christ is king of kings and lord of lords. That's our country. That's where we belong. You know, we, we sometimes are very proud of our nationality. I am British, I am Irish, I am Filipino, I am Nepali, I am this, I am that, and whatever. This is far more important. You're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, a citizen of, of God's kingdom. Paul talks that when we're here, we're just ambassadors for him. You know what an ambassador is. An ambassador lives in a different country. He, but he represents the country he comes from. That's what we are. We belong to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and here in the country where we live, we represent the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. We have passports to the kingdom of heaven. ID cards. We belong there. And it's an eternal kingdom. It will never stop. It will never fail. Isn't that wonderful? Not just citizens of the kingdom of God, but in that verse 19, it goes on to tell us that we are members of God's household, members of God's family. Remember when we were born by God into his family? Remember that day when you trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord? You became a child of God, born of God, brought into his family. Romans 8 puts it very wonderfully. Let me read it to you from Romans chapter 8. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons or daughters of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. That's like daddy. God is our 
close father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. If we're God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Brought into the family of God. Remember, amazing, isn't it? Better than any other family. Because again, it's an eternal family. The physical family of which we're part doesn't last forever. But God's family does. Imagine. I'm a child of God. And then it brings a third picture into it in Ephesians chapter 2. And this third picture is from verse 20 to 22. It says, We are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a chief cornerstone. So we're a building now. What sort of building? In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Oh, what a wonderful picture. We are being built together as a holy temple in which God lives. You know, the church of God, the people of God, we are part of this building in which God lives. Listen to what Peter says in his letter. He says, you like are like living stones. You're being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are being built up to become a holy temple in which God lives. God doesn't live in buildings made by hands. Stephen told the religious leaders that. When he spoke to them in Acts 7, he said, The Most High God does not live in houses made by men. They were proud of their temple. He says, God doesn't live in that temple. Paul also, as when he was in Athens and talking to the philosophers there, he said, The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by men. They were proud of all their temples. God doesn't live there, not in those buildings. We're part of a church. Maybe your church is a building. Maybe it's a huge, ornate building, or maybe it's a simple building. Do you know something? God doesn't live in it. Sometimes we call it a holy place, It's no more holy than any other building. God doesn't live in those buildings made by man's hands. Where does he live? Well, we know he lives in heaven above. But we also know that he lives in the spiritual temple which is being built. Look at verse 22 again. In Christ you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. We are the holy temple of God, or we are being built into it. Notice three times it says this is happening in Christ. We couldn't do it on our own. We couldn't build ourselves into a temple. We would make it all crooked. But Christ, it tells us, is a cornerstone. That's the one that keeps us together, that keeps us straight, that makes sure this holy temple will be a good temple. His teachings through the prophets and apostles will be what, what helps to build us up. But notice we're being built up in Christ. It said that in verse 21. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. In verse 22. And in him you're being built together. It's in Christ. We are in Christ. And in Christ we are being built up to be a holy temple. I think that's amazing. Together doesn't matter what our background was if we are have been born again we are part of the body of Christ the church we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven we are children in the family of God 
We are being built into a holy temple in which God lives by his spirit. Is that not amazing? Do you not find that exciting? It, although it's a challenge as well, because if I am all of that, well, Paul writes a bit further on in this letter to the church in Ephesus. In chapter 4, verse 1, he says, I urge you, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. You're part of the body of Christ. Live a life worthy of that calling. You're a citizen of the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of heaven. Live a life worthy of being a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You're a child of God. Live a life worthy of being a child of God, of being part of that family. You're a stone that's been built into a holy temple in which God lives by his spirit. Oh, live a life worthy of that. As Peter said to us, a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We have a life to live, to live up to who we are. God has made us all of these things in Christ Jesus. Now, by his spirit, he wants us to live a life worthy of that calling. May he help us to do that. Maybe we, may we be willing to let him do that. Let's pray. Father, these are amazing things. Uh, we're, we're, we're thrilled and just we find it so surprising that we're part of the body of Christ. We're citizens of heaven. We're children in your family. We're being built into a holy temple in which you live by your spirit. Oh, Father, these are huge things. Thank you for giving us these positions, for helping us to be who we are. Now we ask that you help us to live the people we are for your glory, that you might not be ashamed of us, but rather that you might be able to work through us and others see you in us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. God bless you.